Hello, welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about feedback. In this area, we have two questions. How do you plan to share feedback and what is your timeline? Second question is, does your feedback include clear instructions on assessing feedback in the CMS and guidance on applying feedback to improve learning and performance? Angie, we'll start with you. I have a few different responses to that. First of all, from the outset of the course, I let my students know their timeline on when they should expect feedback. And on most things I'll say within, you know, three days or within a week of the deadline for the assignment, I try to give them feedback as quickly as possible because I think that that timely feedback is so important, especially because I often ask them to redo work and resubmit it. Um, the other question regarding the feedback and how we kind of use it in the CM this is really important because there are so many different ways to deliver feedback in Canvas. If they're submitting documents, there are ways to comment on the documents. Um, if I'm using rubrics, which is mostly what I use, they could come in the form of those kind of traditional check the box rubrics or the free form comment rubrics. But there's also the option to add submission comments, which I use quite a bit as well, because there you can add video feedback to student work and audio feedback to student work. And for my students, when they're working on coding, a lot of times it's just putting their code on the screen and adding a video where I walk through their code line by line and talk about the choices that they made there. Because of that, I realized to the students that can be very confusing because if I give feedback in a submission comment with that video, it goes to their inbox in Canvas. The rubric is connected with the assignment and yeah. those comments on the document are actually in the document on their Canvas submission. So my comments always also include a also see the rubric for additional comments or in the rubric I might say see the attachment on submission comments for a video because I think it's really important that I clearly direct them to where they need to get that feedback and then of course as I've said before I think it's important especially for coding that students learn from mistakes so I always give them the option to resubmit their assignments and I always use that feedback to guide what they need to do to improve. Awesome. Emery, what about you? Yeah, I completely agree with Angie here. Again, we're pretty much in sync on this. I do the same kind of thing. And it is a challenge with things showing up in, in different places. But, but let me just add to this is that I do think the frequency of feedback is incredibly important. But you also want to manage student time and expectations here. So if you're doing a major assignment and you're going to start grading it, you want to hold those grades until you grade all the assignments and then release them all at once. Because otherwise, you might grade half of them stop for the night do the rest the next morning the students that didn't get a grade are going to be in panic mode by then and, and reaching out to you so you know if it's something major hold that back in terms of discussion forums if it's this kind of standard academic question i know i don't have to go on to discussion forum right away but sometimes I, I will want to really engage them and i'll give them a question that is about a very controversial topic or will really make them think about controversial issues and i know if i'm doing something like that I'm going to have to budget time as soon as that discussion is released, as soon as that question is available, because I'll have students start responding right away and, and sometimes responding in ways that I want to be able to manage that discussion. So I won't I won't let that go to the next day. I'll just make sure that if that discussion goes down to 12 noon, I'm available that afternoon to at least some point to keep an eye on the flow of the conversation and interject my own thoughts as, as much as needed or respond to students. I mean, I'm glad you brought up the timeline and also mentioning muting grades or opening grades for everyone because I think mm -hmm. that's a big issue for a lot of students. I know for me, all of my grades are muted, so you can't see them until I unmute them. So I think for all of our courses, that's our standard build within Canvas, just because I think students, you know, if their friend gets their grade and they haven't gotten theirs, and like, oh my gosh, I did it wrong, Something, something's happening. So again, like Angie mentioned, giving feedback within three days, we try three to five days, depending on what the assignment is and how many assignments are done in that week. So I do, as we finished one, I'll open that one and then move on to the next one. But I think it's really important to set that expectation for students. So that way they know, is it going to be three days? Is it going to be five days? I know for several of my classes, we have assignments that build. So we really try to make sure that with those assignments that build, that they get those grades back right away. So that way they're ready to move on to the next piece. So really tailoring that feedback. So that way they feel that you're reading everything, that you're looking at everything and giving them praise and guidance where they need it. So that way they can improve for the future, I think are really important. So we'll see you guys in the next segment. Thank you.